On the topic of the greatest Need for Speed title of the lot, Most Wanted and Underground 2 are brought up the most. However, for me, it was always Carbon. I don't know why, it just felt special. From the futuristic presentation to the handling model, the sense of speed and everything else. Well, I know Carbon isn't the best, but it was my first racing game, and it thus holds a very special place in my heart. Fighting for territory on a map just feels so much more intuitive than filling out a checklist, even though they are essentially the same thing. Most Wanted, as good as it is, just never felt right with me. I guess it was the atrocious acting that I never found funny, or the overly repetitive career mode, or perhaps just the god awful filter. All things considered, I just find Carbon way more fun in general. Why is this video called the way it is? Well, EA pretty much ruined the idea Black Box had by stretching them out to their thinnest with a very strict release schedule. No one but the designers know how good the finishing product could have been, but from what we do know, it would have been something special. We still got an incredible game, just one that wasn't fully finished. This video has been split into two main categories, the finished product and what should have been. So let's get into it then. The presentation is something special. Even after all these years I remember the fine details of it. The UI theme with the crosses is phenomenal. The rays of light traveling across the garage in a preset pattern add to the whole spectacle even more. It is just really pretty and smooth. The UI itself is positioned at the top, making clear room for your car to be shown, as your pride and joy. I didn't see anyone talk about this, so I will do so. It is a rare sight to behold where in carbon you do not see a car displayed. The only menu I know of is the race select menus which take place on a map. Other than that, none that I can think of. Generic menus you scroll through, your car is there. Wanna save your career progress even though autosave is the future? Your car is on clear display for your eyes to relish in. It doesn't mean much but it shows how black box understood why you played the game in the first place. You adore cars. Well, on the topic of cars, how is the car list? It certainly isn't at the level of Gran Turismo, but it is fairly sizable considering the insane amount of customization that is present. The car list is separated into three classes. Tuners, Exotics, and Muscles. And they are separated into three tiers depending on their performance. Tier 1s are the starter cars, and a few extra ones. Tier 2s are unlocked in the area of the boss that drives those cars, and Tier 3s are reserved for Darius's territory. All of these cars can be customized thoroughly, but is it up to par for Need for Speed titles of that generation? It stacks up by almost all metrics. Furthermore, it is the best in the franchise due to autoscope. Sure, there are no interior customization options, however you don't even see those anyways. What is autoscope? Well, you get presets and get to change the variables that specify certain dimensions of that part. You can see me doing that in the background. Really neat, and makes every design truly yours due to the limitless combinations. Other than autoscope, there are aftermarket mods which work the same way they do in most modern and other modern titles. You buy parts and you get what is shown. The game also features a visual stack, which has the right height, window tint, vinyl and car color options. Once you buy any part, you get sent to the shopping cart so you can choose whatever you want and don't have to worry about misclicking and buying something accidentally without paying for it. Great feature, honestly. Another great feature are the turf wars. You battle other bosses for territory and get yours attacked as well. Failing to defend your territory means you lose that slice of land on the map, reverting your progress back a bit. To win territory, you must have most of the races in that area conquered. This is usually by winning two races in said territory, whether or not there are two or three races to begin with. The Turf Wars are the career mode, which does have a proper story, like all the Black Box Need for Speed games. I will be going through the story very quickly here, so spoilers are ahead. The game begins with you and the three main bosses racing for a prize pool. The cops intervene as you are leading and rest all of them but you. You escape using Darius's car and go to Rockport where the story of Most Wanted takes place. 
After escaping Rockport and returning to Pullman City, the city where Carmen takes place, you are chased by Cross, who is now a bounty hunter. While trying to escape, you total your car and are let off the hook by Darius, who pays your bounty off. You strike a deal with Darius to help him gain control over Poland again, and you do so with one of the three starter cars he gives you, an Alfa Romeo Brera, Chevy Camaro and an RX-8. After a tutorial with Nikki, who now resents you due to what Darius told her happened that night. Depending on which car you pick, you challenge the boss of that car class. Wolf uses exotics. Kenji uses tuners and Angie uses muscle cars. As you are beating them you get access to certain cutscenes and crew members that help you piece the story back together. When you beat all three bosses, you confront Darius, who lets Cross arrest you. Nikki pays off your debt and joins your crew as she now knows Darius was behind all of this. Thanks. Glad you changed your mind. I'm just a bounty hunter. And I always get paid. Just make sure I do. After realizing you are taking control over his turf, Darius gets the three bosses to race for him, this time in much faster cars. Of course, that cannot stop you. Since you are controlling all territories, Darius challenges you and you first have to be Kenji, Wolf and Angie in a canyon and then a city race after which you go into a city duel with Darius. If you manage to beat him, you go head to head in the Carbon Canyon, the last event of the game. You've gone through hours of gameplay to make this possible, and it is all up to you now. If you choose a tuner or exotic to challenge him, this is the most difficult race of them all. If you pick muscle, this is a piece of cake as you can just immediately overtake him on the straight and win that way. After beating him, he gives you the keys to his gorgeous R8 and tells you there is always someone a little faster than you. Enjoy it while it lasts. There's always someone out there who's a little faster than you are. And sooner or later, they're gonna catch up. And promptly leaves the franchise. How good is the story? Well, it is certainly unique. Another thing it is, is better than anything made in the past 10 years in the genre, so take that as you will. You might have noticed me mentioning canyon duels. What is that about? Well, to my knowledge, it hasn't returned to any Need for Speed title, so you're excused for not knowing what they are. Basically, you're tasked with running as close as possible to the car in front without making contact, as that loses you points you rack up based on proximity. At first, you're the chasing car. If you overtake for the lead and stay there for 10 seconds, you automatically win. If you fall over 100 meters behind for 10 seconds, you lose. After the first leg, you are now in the lead and tasked with getting as far away from the car behind as possible. These are the tensest race events due to their difficulty as you can fall off the cliff on many occasions and due to the music which is brilliant. But first, what other events are there? Well, there are circuit, sprint, drift, race wars, and said canyon runs. Not that many event types, but they're fairly diverse, as sprint, circuit, and drift events can also be run through the canyons, which adds to the variation. What are race wars? They're massive circuit races featuring 12 drivers, unlocked by beating a boss in that area. There are three of them, as beating Darius doesn't unlock one. You can have crew members assist you in non-canyon circuit and sprint runs. Along the way you unlock crew members that have one of the three skills and a special function. The three skills are blocking, aka taking out an opponent, drafting, aka going ridiculously fast to give you a massive speed boost, and seemingly infinite cornering grip. Scouting, aka just letting you know where certain shortcuts are. 
I never really used scouts as I know the map by heart and know where all of the shortcuts are. However, they can be useful for a newcomer. After unlocking a drafter, I just used them even though I rarely used up my crewmate's ability and just relied on my own driving skills. But it did come in clutch a few times. They radio you about cars that are trying to overtake you and give you words of encouragement which are neat. They drive cars which you can customize to make your crew match. I never did this in my most recent run, but it is a great feature. And finally, we have the music. I've kept the best for last, as this soundtrack is simply perfect. Each car class has its own theme, and they are incredible. The police chase music is, I believe, the same as in Most Wanted, with the reactive music and everything. It's been a while since I have had a proper police chase in Most Wanted, so I could be wrong. The music is at its best during Canyon Duels, coincidentally when the game itself peaks too. Here, have a listen to just how tense it gets. It's no secret that this game was incredibly rushed. EA was pushing towards an October 31st release date and Black Box simply couldn't achieve so without cutting a massive amount of the content out. We don't know everything that went behind closed doors, but we do know that drag racing was cut, although most likely due to the lack of straight roads in Palm Island City. The police system was supposed to be carried over from Most Wanted, but there simply wasn't enough time to do so, and you got a tacked on feature that you only experience a handful of times during the entire game. I don't see where this would fit in gameplay wise, but Black Box most likely knew what they were doing better than I do. There was also supposed to be an entirely new part of the map, exclusively used for the tutorial that didn't make it into the final game. Furthermore, the actual ending of the game wasn't really finished either as by looking at the cutting room floor we see that Nikki has a recorded voice line where she challenges the player to one final race. The content that I will be talking about here is taken from the cutting room floor, link to which is in the description. Several events have been cut from the game, and we know the boss fights should have had unique names, rather than Challenge X. They were supposed to be named Kenji Battle, Angie's Last Resort, and Engage the Wolf. Much better than the finished product, in my opinion. There are several unused events and maps that never made it into the final game. We were also supposed to have free roam access to the canyons, and I would imagine more canyon events due to that. It just sucks that we never got that in the final game, as canyon free roam seems much more fun than just going around the city. Imagine police chases happening around there. 
with some unused cars such as the Audi A4 Quattro, Volkswagen Golf GTI, Porsche 911 Turbo S, 996 generation, and Porsche 911 Carrera S, 997 generation. I remember seeing a poster for a cut boss, but I simply cannot find it anywhere. This fits in with the fact there was another crew member called Manic, that never appeared in the finished product. Apparently we were supposed to get an entirely different part of the map, which once again ties in with the cut boss and crew member I just mentioned. Unfortunately, I do not have a solid source for this, so it is purely speculative. Oh, what should have been. Oh, what has been. This game is infamous for its cut content, but it shouldn't distract you from just how good it is on its own. Replaying it and it absolutely holds up, if we ignore the graphics which haven't aged terribly either to be fair. I'm fairly biased towards the game so I can't really say anything bad about it. However, I do dislike how in the latter half of the game, when you're driving supercars, they're too difficult to control, and you end up just bashing into walls. Yes, I could simply drive slower and avoid that altogether, but the catch-up is insane in this game. Nowhere near most wanted, but still really bad. As for the flaws in general, eh, it is short, but I like that about it. It isn't a chore to play through, and this review gave me an excuse to do just that. There are some wonky physics involved at times, but that is pretty much it. Apart from the career mode, there is also a challenge series mode which is similar to most wanted, albeit you work from bronze to gold in a single challenge type instead of unlocking seemingly random ones as you beat certain events. Well, that's everything I have to say about this amazing game. I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe as it means the world to me. Thank you for watching.